Hello, I'm Mixed Miles and Marman, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, up on a bench at Co Royal B24. Um, a gentleman got hold of me via my YouTube channel. Um, I think he picked this up. Um, I don't write another history behind it. It's in a little bit of rough shape. It's been left outside in the rain for a while, apparently. And um, he has had it running to a degree, um, but I think what has happened of late is that it's, it's now refusing to run. So it was running, but running very, very lumpy. He suspected fuel. We got in contact with each other a long time ago, and I believe I've ordered a kit of bits and bobs for this probably last year. Um, but with everything that's going on in his life and what have you, it's been put on the shelf. But just recently, he's drove a long old way to drop this off. And the idea was he was supposed to camp out in his, in his camper van over the weekend whilst I fix it. But I said, I have no idea when I'm gonna get to it. Drop it off, leave it with me, and I'll give you a message when it's all done. So. In this video, this may be a one or two part, three part, I'm not quite sure. The idea of the exercise is to get this machine up and running as it should do. Um, but there are one or two other bits I need to do first. I need to do a carburetor, clean tank flush, I need to do a pull cord change, uh, check the oil, possibly a new spark plug, all that sort of stuff. It's all gonna be done. Um, not a full service, this is just a get this machine running, please, Mick. So I'm not even sure um, if it is capable of running, if it's capable of running properly. I don't know if it, how, what state the engine is, I've got no idea, but it has got the IC engine on here, which is a five horsepower um, commercial engine on this one, which is nice. Briggs and Stratton, flat heads, so normally that give a lot of problems out. Um, it's got electric start, apparently it's got a new battery before I've got to charge that up, and uh, that all does work, but just having problems actually getting, getting this machine to run. So a nice big B24 Royal um, cylinder motor up on the bench. Let's have a little look at this and try and get it up and running where we can. Hopefully we'll turn it around for him and get this mower to run for him and he can cut his lawn. So the, the, the cylinder looks to be in really good shape despite its appearance, but it doesn't seem to be no nicks on it and not a lot of wear. So yeah, that's good. If this is the first time you're watching Mixed Mowers and Mower Man, hit your subscribe button, whack your bell, send notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload my video. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty. I think get the pull cord changed first so we can, we can actually pull this machine over and uh, then we'll have a look at the carburetor and what have you. I think that'd be next, the next way to go. So let's get on with it. Right, I think the first thing we need to do is get this machine into a state where it will at least do something and fire, and the pull cord is, is tied up here, just a bit of string and what have you. It doesn't look very good, so we're gonna, we're gonna do the pull cord first. So there's a bolt already missing off the back of the pull cord already. So we can take these little tiny bolts out, and get a little magnet tray up and running today. Because we might have a few bits and bobs. Oh. There goes my socket into the depths, never to be found again. I think what the idea is is get the machine running, and he says what he wants to is, full, is like trying to do a full restore. That's the idea. So the condition, despite the fact it's not very good, I think is going to be improved once uh, once we try and get it up and running. So pull cord off, and as you can see, it's not it's not a very good pull cord. It's quite a thin one. There's plenty of string on there, so I'm just going to change it over very quickly. Take that string out, and we put a decent pull cord in there. Let's uh, grab something just to block that pull cord off. And we'll give it a bit of an oil up as well whilst we're here, just to make sure it's, uh, it's all good. Let's see how far that pull cord actually wants to go. Yeah, so about as far as it wants to go, that's good. So put the tiny pick in there just to hold that off. Put that in there. Grab myself a lot and pull cord. What we got here? What's that there? That's uh, that's 4.5. That's a bit thick for that. What's that one there, Mick? That's a, uh, a three millimeter. That's perfect. Let's get the old gas burner out. I'm just going to put uh, a new recoil on. That was hot. All right. Let's uh, get this pull cord fitted onto here. Take that little pick out just whilst we're doing this. Run that through to all, wind that back. Straight in there. Have that out, put the pick back in just so it holds. But the mix mower's not in there. I've got a two in there. Take that out. All right. Let's give that a bit of a spray with some WD-40. Let's get that running up. 
straight down in there. There you go, see that moved? See that moved? It wasn't even me. It's moving, see? It says, oh, thank you. WD-40, oh, 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 cheers, look, see? Uh, WD-40 is fantastic bit of kit. Grease that all up. Have that all working as it should do. It's all taken in, look, taking loads in. Right, so we know where we are with that. And there's no pull cord handle on the back of that. So once a pull cord handle, I've got spares of those somewhere. Just I'll pick a second hand one up. We'll cut it off here for now. And then we will move that pull cord out of the way. Let me find a uh, an end for that. Um, and I'll just put the three bolts back on and that a bit of pull cord um, done. Right, so that is the, um, the pull cord now refitted. Um, I've just put a second hand uh, Briggs and Stratton uh, pull cord on the end, uh, handle on the end of that as well. Next thing I'm going to do would be to get rid of that gas burner. And I want to bring down said bar. I get to the spark plug. Uh, that's all right down in there. Yeah, lovely. And I want to loosen that off. See what that looks like. That's good, actually. That's very good. So let's just put a bit of carb spray down the head. And all I want to do is just want to get this machine, literally, just to make a noise. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Bit of carb spray down the head. That'll tell us whether or not we have a, an engine that's worth, worth looking at. There's no point in going all the way down this road as if the engine won't, won't even make a noise. So a bit of throttle. Up the top, the drive should be disengaged, handbrake should be on, should be good to go. Keep holding the machine in case it wants to wander off with you. Turn the ignition on maybe, Mick. Perfect. So the machine does actually um, rev up, which is good. So we now we've got an engine, we now got an engine that, that can combust fuel um, and it does run. Uh, to what category, we don't yet know that. Um, so I'll be checking the oil next. Um, and then we'll go straight in. Now, we did say it did run, but run like a bag of poo. Um, so I know for a fact, an oil change is, is going to benefit it, but we need to get into that carburetor, see what the carburetor is doing. And then um, probably overhaul the carburetor with new gas, and we'll have to clean the tank out, all that sort of good yummy stuff. And that should then allow this machine to actually run as it should do. So next thing we we'll do, check out the oil, see what the oil is actually doing. I loosen that off, grab a rag, where is my rag, I just... and for quite a big old lump, it's got quite a short dipstick with minimum maximum on there, so let's put that in there, screw that in because it's a flathead, take it out, and we are nearly out of oil, next to no oil in there at all, see that? So it's a little bit of oil. Now this is the IC engine, so this has actually got a, a, a cast iron sleeve on it. Now I would like to drain the, uh, the oil out of there, which will be out the back. Seems to be quite a bit of oil hanging out the back of here anyway. So I'm gonna turn the machine around. I'll put the dipstick back in. I'm gonna lift that arm back up out of the way, and I wanna spin this mower all the way around, so it's facing away from me like that and then around the back here he's missing half the roller half the roller rubber is missing on it oh it won't it won't cut very straight because he's missing a bit there but he says he's gonna redo it so around the back here just here is a little tiny um oil filler cap let me just show you that otherwise you're just going to complain and say oh you didn't show me a mick well i'm trying to show you just hang on a minute so i've been impatient so around here uh just under that feather there's an oil filler and uh, emptying um, device. So if you just unscrew that, and then tip the lawnmower onto its bottom, um, it'll drain whatever oil is in this machine, it will drain it out. So I'll get that done now, and then uh, I'm gonna leave it without oil for now, and then we'll move on to a next step, which would be uh, the carburetor, which uh, lovely little carb on here. Um, I'll get that done, and uh, get all that off, get the tank off, and get it all tidied out. So. All off first, all out first, get that done, and then we move on to the carburetor side. So there's quite a bit to get out on here. We want to try and remove the air filter box next. Now there's all this metal work up on top, so I don't want to remove it, so I really, really have to. So 
So a little tiny, what's that, eight mil on there? I think it's about an eight mil, is it? Uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, eight mil. Eight mil nut here to do, here. And maybe an eight mil nut on the other side, and that will take the, the black plastic air box off and start to break it down because you can't get to these um, carburetors as a, as a single unit. You've got to take the, um, the air box, the carburetor and tank all comes off in one go, then you can start to break it down. Uh, only because of, of the plate up the top here. So this bolt here to do, and there's one just around the other side, just hither. And then uh, I'll come back to you once, uh, once I've negotiated that, because it's gonna be a bit of a tight fit to get that in there, but uh, you can get it in there, shouldn't be no problem at all. So give me two seconds and I'll get that taken off. Right, so the air filter um, cover, pre-filter, and uh, the normal air filter is now off, if I can get the air filter actually out. <laughs> it's, uh, hasn't been out for a while. There you go. I'm not worried about what dust falls inside there because uh, it's all gonna be coming out. So another eight mil will now go in here. There's one here, one here, and uh, one here, and one here. And that's what we'll, we'll remove the, uh, the airbox cover off of the air intake and that sort of good stuff. So that's gonna take a little while to do that. I don't want, don't you sit there and watch me do, doing all these nuts and bolts because the video will be about 14 days long. It'll end up being like one of them, one of them Mend It Man videos. Um, so I'll get these four undone here. I'll say one here, one there, one here, and one there. And that, that tray, this metal tray, will then lift off. So let me get that done. I'll back to you in two seconds. Right, four bolts now taken off, and now that tray will now, will now just lift up, okay, that'll come off. So you can put the four bolts inside that little tray so you don't lose them for later on, so you know exactly where they are. And here's all your linkage. You can now, all I do is, I'll just take you off the stand, and I'm just literally gonna bring you in, just so you can have a quick little look at some of the linkages. So if you've got one of these machines in bits, and you wanna know what's going on, you can have a quick little look there, trying to get a decent bit of light for you. It's not very easy, because I've got uh, minimal space, but there, there's your choke mechanism there. You can see it all working. There's your throttle up here, look, it's all good. So a quick little shot there with your camera. If you want to take any linkages or anything like that, you can see how it's all set up. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do with my smartphone now. A couple of photographs, as all of this is gonna be taken off very, very shortly. And then we can move on. Now the bolt you want to get to, to remove this off of the uh, manifold is right down in there. That's where it is. There's one bolt there and there'll be one up the top just there. There might even be a third round the other side yet, but they, are, they can be a bit of a pickle. Uh, but what you want to try and do is try and move it in one go if you can. So there's no way you're going to be able to remove um, this it, as in one um, sort of one unit or, or sort of separate where you take the, the carburetor off of the tank. It, that won't lift up like that because there's nowhere to go. So you have to physically remove the bolt down here, that one, take all these gubbins out here, and disconnect all that lot there. Once that one's loose, that will give you a little bit of free play, and then you can then start to loosen it all up, and it all comes off together, and then that will come off a manifold off that bolt at the back there. So let me get um, that one done there first, get him loose, and then we go from there. If I hit any more snags, I'll let you know. Right, with the bolt now removed from the bottom of a tank, it's right underneath. What I'm gonna go for next, I'm gonna go for trying to remove this little tiny choke plate, because that will then give me access down here to that nut there, and over, over yonder. So. It'd be a, like a Torx bit here, and I think over this back bit here as well, there's one there. Remove those two, um, and that should, I believe, free this little plate up. Once that plate's been removed, the choke mechanism, I can then disconnect the choke off of here, um, remove it, re retract that plate, and that give me a bit more visibility. So let's get that done. See you in a sec. Okay, so that's the choke mechanism now taken off, and it's just two little tiny bolts here and here which locate on the tank here and here. So two little tiny um, Torx bits there. Just disconnect the choke mechanism, which is off of this lever here, which goes onto that hole there. That then comes away. So now we can start to see the, the actual um, carburetor tank itself. And there's a bolt here to get hold of, and a bolt over the far side around here to get hold of but I've now got a bit more access to get into there. So let me now just try and work on that to try and uh, remove that. I will have to take this um, bolt off of a carburetor, which is off of a governor. Uh, and the governor linkage is just behind there. And is that moving? Yeah, it's moving, yeah. So the linkage there to remove as well. Uh, I don't want to upset too much of that because um, I purely just want to remove that bolt there, take, slide that governor swivel off, um, and then just remove the linkage off of the governor off the bottom and leave it on the top. 
because um, I want this to go back onto the carburetor once I've removed it. So next job to do, remove that bolt there and that bolt there without snapping them off. If they snap, game over. Right, so a 3 8 spanner um, actually removes that one there. That's now out, as you can see, that's been redrawn. And all done, just got a 3 8 spanner, uh, turned it around. Once I got it moving, it wasn't very tight. Turned it around like so, and then just, just a quarter of a turn at a time, get that one done. Now for the slightly more trickier one. Right, to get this next one off, uh, I've got a Torx bit here. I uh, couldn't tell you what size it is without looking at it. It's a uh, 25. And because the, the uh, manifold bolts, um, they've got either a 3 8 bolt or 25 Torx. You can put either either in there. You can get a Torx bit up into here. And then just rotate that. Now you'll start to see the manifold starting to come loose. So just support that. So I'm not fully disconnected down the bottom yet. I've got a few springs to remove, bits and pieces. But you'll start to see that now move. And once we get it all the way out, so I think it's about there. Are we there? Yeah, we're there. That's that one gone. So now the whole lot is now loose. But remember what I said to you, there's still a few more bracketry bits. The governor arm around this side here needs to be uh, removed. So this um, one here needs to come out and try and fight the light here, gents and ladies. Uh, that one just there, that's got to be undone. Um, once that's done, um, that release the governor arm, which goes all the way down the side of a tank down through here. Okay, down in there. And then just got to remove the throttle cable because all of this bracketry comes with it. So remove the throttle cable, um, disconnect that, and then uh, the spring can probably stay where it is. That connection there has got, has got to come off. Um, and then the whole lot will then come away. So let me get those little jobs done and I'll come back to you once I've done that. Okay, so I've now removed that little tiny bolt just there and then remove the, um, the governor off of there. Okay, so now the, that will now, um, when I remove that off a carburetor, that will now come apart, no problem there. Um, just make sure you don't lose no bits. Now, when you go to pull away this whole tank and carburetor, because the bottom bit's now been disconnected too, the cable's come off of there, that's all good, and there's just two wires, wires, that sounded like someone from Suffolk. The two wires there to remove, once you finish chewing your carrot, if you chew your carrot and crunch it, then you can put then you put your combine harvester around the other side. No, two screws there, two bolts there to remove off that little tiny brass nut there. They look like that just there. Sounds like, from, are you, sounds like are you from Safrak? I'm not from Safrak. Right, um, now pay attention guys, girls. Down the bottom here, there's a little tiny spring. It is just, uh, get your hand in there, make, just there. It's a little spring just there, that's got to be taken off. And until you take that off, I ain't going nowhere. I can't even see how that connects on there. Uh, I think it's just a tab, I think, I'm not quite sure. But you see what I'm trying to do, there's a little tiny spring just in the error. That's gotta come out. Down here, next to, next to my tractor, you'll find a spring. And if you don't take that off, then you'll break it. But you see what I'm trying to do, is a spring just in here. I'm gonna get a pair of long nose pliers. Cool, this is a bit tough, um, right. And these are, the, these are the real struggles, guys. This is what I have to do. Right, that spring there, that's got to come out. I'm trying to bounce the camera and get the spring out at the same time. Right, there you go, there's the spring out. Right, so now I believe, I think, I think if I just now remove, oh, sorry about the camera, guys. It's, it's really hard to try and show you guys what, what to do because you can't always get your hands in here when you're trying to manipulate the camera. Let me put it back on your tripod. And I know you're safe then. It's really hard. It is really hard, guys, trying to get these camera, these camera angles and shots in for you so you guys don't mess up later on. Let me make the mistake, and I'll show you where I went wrong. I mean, you guys don't have to do that, All right? So now that bolt comes back off of the governor. That comes away now. I think we're there. Uh, one wire. Where's that wire? There it is. Right, is there? Right, there you go. Tank and carburetor. That's now off. No carrots to worry about. So tank's now off. Carburetor's off. What I want to do... Tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I wanna zig a zig out. I wanna remove, um, what, um, I, I can leave that. I'll put that bolt off a of governor in there. I've got Mr. Sydney Snail. There's Mr. Sydney Snail, here's, oh, I said, it's Sid, look, you go outside. Um, I've got a lot of work in here to do, just a bit of tidying up. Now's the time to take photographs, guys, have a tidy up, have a clear up, all that sort of good stuff, right? Because you're gonna need to do that later on. Uh, but we can now go on and do the, um, 
the carburetor now. Um, get that separated from a tank, get that cleaned. And then with a bit of OR, a bit of ER pokery, we can um, do that. Are you from Suffolk? No, like my tractor. Right, let's get on with that, Terry. Carburetor tank, next. Right, guys, uh, we're on the old petrol tank here. I've got, I've got to try and figure out a new uh, angle for me camera for me um, carburetor cleaning because I've got a new camera. Well, not new, but it's new, new since I've been at this end of the workshop. But either way, I'll try and get most of it done for you. So, since we removed the um, the carburetor choke device, I had one screw here, one screw there. We've only got one, two, two to remove. So one will be off the inlet manifold side. So we're just gonna unscrew that. And I appreciate you can't see a great deal. I'll try and turn it around for you. It's just not the easiest. I'm trying to get these angles for you, these angle but angles. I'm not being one for that sort of stuff. And there's a pump on the side of here and all, which we'll investigate a bit later on. Now, I hope I've got all the right bits for this. Take that out, can't be a good bit of pumping. Good, good. And then uh, one over this side here. Like that. Now, inside here, or underneath here, there'll be a, there'll be a gasket. And then there'll also be a big straw. And, and generally, Generally, rule of thumb is is, is is for straw that gets blocked up because the tank's got, got crud in it. That's generally what causes the issue. So we we'll remove that that torx bit there. There it goes. And we we'll take the inlet manifold pipe off. I think I think that's her. I think oh, there's one in the centre as well on these. One in the centre up here. If you don't remove these, you won't get it off. Simple as that, really. It will be stuck onto the gasket. So before I go too far, I want to find the gasket kit I've got for this so that we can um, compare it. Now that's a longer one. That goes through the, through the center there. Now that should be, that should be her, I think. Let me double check, I've got everything I need out of it. None there, 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 none there. That all looks good. So that should peel off. Gas. Now it'll be a big straw underneath. So just go careful. You don't gasket, that gasket's at it. And there's a big straw I'm on about. That's a pickup tube, as they call it. That's got a bit of dirt in the bottom of it there. That's a bit of dirt. That puts one side and we remove a gasket. I'm gonna put that down just to one side. I'll try and keep as much as that as I can, just so I can compare it with the tother one that I've got oh, for it. Now, they're all pretty much same, the same, but they do differ. Now inside here, um, there's a lot of crud just inside of a tank, just there, uh, you can see, I'm trying to get a better lamp on it for you. Just in there, there's a lot of crud in there, okay, which wants, which wants cleaning out, disinfecting, all that sort of good stuff, because it will, it will never do anything if that done look good. Now, a lot of these do come with a sponge, big sponge inside here. Um, and you can remove them sponges, okay, if it, a lot of them have, do deteriorate. This is 1996, 1997. It don't look too bad, the sponge, it looks okay, but, um, a lot of the sponges in it, they do deteriorate, and uh, you, you can you can just pull them out. You can just pull them out. They don't do anything anything great, okay? You can just pull them out, but uh, it's up to you. Leave it in, take it out, do what you want to do. They can get rust on them. My mate, my mate mend it, man, so they can get rust on them, apparently, but I've not seen them done a video on one of these yet. These, these are too technical for him. Um, so, um, clean the tank, swill it all out, make, make it all good as it needs to be. Once you're happy with a tank, put that to one side, and that can sit up out of the way because we need to divert our attention to the carburetor in all its entirety. Um, so now as we try to take photographs, if you want to take bits and pieces off, i.e. the, uh, the throttle assembly, that can come off if you want it to, but just take photographs so you know which way around your orientation of the rods go. That's, that's the best thing to do. If you don't take the orientation, then you're gonna get stuck a bit later on. Um, there's not a great deal in here to take apart. You can take these straws off and out, but, I, but, but they do like to snap. So I will be inclined to leave mine on because you can clean it via the pump side just over hither. Um, main jet wise, there's a, there's a, a slow running um, fuel mixer screw just here. And you just want to turn that in how many turns it is. 
So I just turn it all the way in, count the turns, and then you know where it is uh, to be set for next time, okay? Uh, apart from that, they're, they're a pretty straightforward um, car, but there's not a lot can go wrong with them, really. But if you've got bad fuel and corrosion, then that, that's the biggest cause. So let me get this gasket set I've got. That's just come off there, so I'll keep an eye on that. That went in that way like that, Mick, yeah, like that. Um, let me get the gasket set I've got, and then we'll go for a clean up. Get this cleaned, get it all sorted out, and then um, we can go from there. So gloves on, clean up, gasket set, back in two ticks. Right, so quick little look at what we've got here. Um, and it comes with two main gaskets, and they look to be identical. So you get two. I'm not seeing any differences between the two at all. And if you just take this bit, for instance, this is the old one, and just turn that around, that's going to be that's going to be about right. So that's so that's the right gasket for that. Okay, so we've got two of those. That's handy. Who's handy? Two of those. Um, and then we've also got inlet manifold um, ones. We've also got um, top carburetor ones. Uh, we've also got the fuel pump. Gasket there, which we're going to go inside there in a bit, and a load of other gaskets too. So I've got a main jet also for down here. That's not going to go in there though, because that's, that's a different style of jet in there. That's a screwing jet. I don't think you can take that one out of there without drilling it out. Maybe I don't think they remove. Not not to my uh, knowledge, but we should see in a bit. Once I remove that out, we'll see how we get on. So got the right gaskets. Got that as well. Got no idea where that comes from. That's for for a different different. Uh, Bit of kit entirely, I believe. So uh, that's where we are. So first thing I want to do, I want to clean the car better off and I'll remove this pump side, get that disassembled, and then um, start to run some carburetor spray through, start to clean it up so I know exactly where we're going, what we're doing, how we're getting there, all that sort of good yummy stuff. So that carburetor kit, I will try and leave a link in the, in the description for it. I think I got it off of Amazon. I think I think my good friend um, Stella, lawnmower lady, put me onto it. I think it was around about, Oh, it wasn't a lot of money, about nine quid for a full set, so definitely worth doing. Um, and uh, so we'll go from there. So let me get it all cleaned up, get it tidied up, um, get the pump taken apart, and then we'll move on with the next part of the old project. Okay. Right, so um, what did I go over there for? Oh, I can't remember now. So um, got me Torx bit now to remove the pump side of it. Um, now I'm going to put this in my old solid cleaner. I, I would normally... Uh, just clean it manually, but this is this has been sat outside and all that sort of stuff. There's a bit of corrosion on this um, carby as well, so I'm just going to remove the pump screws off of here. It's like a diaphragm in here, um, and uh, I should be cleaning up my old ultrasonic cleaner and put it in the cleaner, and it can have an hour, half hour each side. Gas Mark Six. Um, cook it in there. And then uh, once that's done, it can then come out and be, com be, be compressed on what have you. Now I took the um, screw out, you know that uh, fuel mixture screw that went in uh, in there? I took that out one and a half turns. Um, try and leave this, uh, this pump out there. Cool. That's a the thing there, there's a little tiny, little tiny pin in there. I'm trying to swivel it up. Cool, that's on there, that is. I've been on there a while, that has. Oh, I word my word. There's a little tiny dowel pin in there, so it, 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 they should just swivel up, but uh, it's been in there a little while. I don't, just don't want to damage it. If I do any damage, I've got to pay for this myself, so really not interested in, in, in damage. And there'll be a spring in there. I'm sure there's a spring in there as well, so. Let me just try and tease this up a little tiny bit, just to try and get it to move. At the moment, it's not having it, so I don't want to damage it, so I'm going to take my time, bit of spray, bit of lube, and uh, get this to move. As soon as it starts moving again, I'll bring you guys back you can see it, so you can see what's in there, and we'll go from there. Right, I'm back. Um, I've got a really, really small flathead driver, and just, just tucked it underneath here, and it and it just it just started to move it, so that's now moving. So that should now move up. It goes, it's coming. And underneath here, is your is your casing again, and you've got this little diaphragm. Remove that, and underneath there, you've got this uh, got this spring with a little tiny cap on. Like I said, there's a little tiny cap on that on that spring, so don't don't lose that. Okay, a little tiny cap there. See it? 
that's separate. And that goes on top of a spring when it goes, goes back in. And uh, I think that's it. That's all there is in there. So all that is, that, that, that just pumps your fuel, okay? Right, now it's all apart. Uh, do I get a spare one of those? Uh, don't think I did. I'll try and retain that if I can. Uh, no, not one. I've got one of those. It's off a classic, which, which, will, which will do a job just as good. I will try and retain this one, though. So I've got a scalpel. I'm just going to try and remove uh, that without... Uh, there you go, so without, without damaging it. So I want to keep that if I can. So that's good. Um, apart from that, that's pretty much it. I've got a, a little jet here just to drill out, um, just to make sure that it's actually running. Um, there's not a lot there's, there's not a lot to these, to be fair, these old carbies. There's not a lot to them at all. Get that cleaned up. Into the ultrasonic cleaner, it will go. And um, 30 minutes each side, and I'll come back to you. And hopefully, um, we can get this carburetor then reinstalled. And that'll probably do the video after I've, after I've put it all back together. And we'll see how we get on from there. So, check in about an hour's time for me, 10 seconds for you guys. Right, so it's the next day. Uh, tank has been swilled out, cleaned, and uh, I just got a um, scalpel on the top there to remove a gasket off of that. So, that's all done and been, uh, been draining out overnight. So, there's no fuel in there. Um, carburet is now done as well. It went in the ultrasonic cleaner for about an hour, hour and 20 minutes, something like that, um, to clean it all up rather than doing a manual clean. Cause this, this has been sat outside for a little while. So I was quite conscious of, um, doing a good job on it. So a bit of rag. That's not a very good bit of rag, Mick. A bit of rag here. Bit of rag because there's some dirt on my carburetor tray. And here's a carb in all its entirety. There's a carb looking nice and clean. We like that. It's really, really good. So all I want to do is put my fuel mixture screw in, which goes into here. Uh, screw it all the way in and, and roughly one and a half turns to come back out. Um, and that'll be roughly where it's set. And hopefully if, if the machine all runs as it should do, then, um, off one one and a half um then we'll be good there so that's pretty much it that's all it was on on the carb side but we'll have to go to the pump side now which is over here um and we've got the little tiny spring with a cap that goes on the top remember what's about the cap it's got a little tiny cap that sits on top of a spring like so and then that just sits in there like that just seat it right and then it's got a diaphragm here pump diaphragm now that'll only go on one way, guys. There's a, there's a hole here, and there's a, there's a, a dowel pin here. The dowel pin goes on, on the end bit here, you see? So that'll only go on one way. It, it can't, you can't get it wrong. We can put it on wrong, but you can't get it wrong. Then get your pump. That's been cleaned as well. A little bit dirty in there. <laughs> That's where it's been sat overnight. And then just seat that down over top of that pin. And then you've got these little tiny Torx bits here which will just seat that down. Just be careful when you put it in, just make sure you don't, you don't catch, that, catch that diaphragm. So just seat your bolts down. Once, once they're in place, you can do it, then just warm, then just sort of do them up. One there, oh, drop one, and one there. Lots of people I see, they do these carburetors, and when they do them, they don't, they, don't, they just change the gasket underneath and don't, and don't change the pump. You've got, you've got to change that pump diaphragm, really, to get anything out of it. Just gonna loosely do them up for now just so they're all well seated. <clears throat> like so. Now this is probably gonna be a two part video guys. So if you're looking to do a complete video, this is, this is gonna be a bit long otherwise. I'll probably end the video in a bit and then uh, I'll do another video on how to, how to install it, okay? Otherwise it's gonna, it's gonna run into about 14 hours. It'd be a, quite a long video. Nick them up, that's that done. So now me, my carburetor is now fully uh, put back together. I've got the rods to put back on yet, but I took a photograph of those later on, so I need to refer back to my photograph of which, which rod goes where. So that's not a problem. And then last thing to do, I've got a gasket here, which is this one. Um, just got to figure out where that goes. So just place it down and you'll find that uh, it's got a bit of a, a channel just here. That channel has got to go over there. So I believe, uh, get around the right way and make it might help. It goes on like that, okay, that's how that sits. That sits on there just like that. 
So there's a new gasket to go on the tank. We'll screw that down to the tank and then uh, we'll go from there. So there you go. That'll be part one of this Atco Royal uh, B24, is it? Yeah, B24. Um, so far we've done, took the oil out, tank off, carburetor off, tank clean, carburetor clean, all that sort of stuff. Pip, come here, darling. Come here. Pip, good girl. Um, my little tiny Pip, she's not very happy. She's about three months out of season and uh, I think she's having a phantom pregnancy because she's producing milk. I hope she's not pregnant because if she is, I want to know what you've been up to, young lady. But uh, she's, uh, she's not very happy. She's, uh, I think she's got a bit of phantom pregnancy coming on, so we've just, just, just got to look after her at the moment and see how she's getting on, but she's doing okay. Um, so there you go. Um, we'll leave it there for now. And then when we come back in the next video, um, you'll see uh, how we uh, put the tank back on, carburetor back on, get it all plumbed in, get it all wired up, get it all sorted out, and hopefully we better fire this machine up. I don't think we better fire it up today because uh, it's absolutely lashing outside, and I mean really cold, wet, horrible rain. But uh, whilst we're in the warm, Pippi, we can get on and get, this, get the second part of this video done. So if you like this video, Mix Motor Merman, on how to take your carburetor tank off of your Atco B24, how to clean it, um, how to put it all back together, and then in the next video, I'll show you how to put it all back together properly. Um, then hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, send notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video. I'm looking forward to seeing that episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. Been two and girls and guys, much more importantly, take it easy.